And welcome back to the Career Builder Series, episode 204. And so we'll make this a little bit on the shorter side here. What I will do is um, we'll start to work on making some instrument approaches. So if you if you watched last, um, you know, the last episode, you, you saw that I was doing an instrument approach into the military base here. And all went well except taxing, which was my fault. But um, so I need some information from these runways. So currently we're at the military base here. And I need to figure out a heading. So right now, if we look, I'm using my compass here. That's about a 030 heading. That's a, look as far in the distance as I can. That's a 211. All right, so the runway coming in here is a 210. So that would be runway 21. The runway coming in here is 030, so this would be runway 3. So runway 3 goes this way, so you put you actually should have a 3 drawn right here. And on this runway coming this way would be a 21. So this is runway 21, and going this way, this is runway 3. So let's go ahead and we'll start with that. Um, I'm trying to see what I can do here. So let's make an approach plate. And I have, I can't really get rid of the haze here. See how they put X's on the runway? That's wrong. Um, X is meaning the runway is closed. So let's go ahead and, I can't do photo mode like that. Can I? No. Uh, <laughs> trying to see what I can do. Uh, let's go like this. So let's wait for all of our crap, um, you know, all of our tools and whatnots to go away here. Let's do this instead. Um, let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hand draw these a little bit. Um, Let's take this picture. I, th I think I'll take this picture here. Um, is there any way I can get rid of all this crap showing? 3 to waypoints can go. I would like to get rid of all of my UI. Can't recall if I can uh, if I can get rid of all my UI. Graphics, VSync, okay, call that third person, general. Clock show, player name show, chat messages, no, key by hints, no, tool tips, simple. Okay. And then I think my, um, let's see, is there a, that, this bar should hide on its own, but it takes a little while. So I'm trying to see if I can get it to close quick, more quickly. I can cut it out too. That's not a big deal. All right, so let's start with this. All right, so let's go in my preferred paint program here. Since that was the last approach plate I was working with, actually, let's do it from the map. The map will be better. So right there, let's do it off the map here. Um, there's remove waypoint. Okay. Okay, so I'm just trying to get rid of all this crap here. So I want to orient this to the runway so I can flip it in uh, the paint program. So let's go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Let's open that up. And All right, so let's make an approach plate. So this is going to be, let's add a layer. A very boring font. Um, probably Helvetica, maybe. Let's do Helvetica compress. So I'm trying to remember which direction is which. So let's go ahead and get my character. Um, get out of there, you. Undo, undo, undo. Okay, let's go back to the game. Okay. 
So that is three zeros facing this way. Okay, so let's go back to the to here. Oh, come on. Swap me, you ding dong. Okay, so this is three zero right here. So let's go ahead and black is what we want. So three zero. Okay. Let's go increase that to 26. I'm sorry, zero three. Zero three is the wrong way. Wouldn't be three zero. Uh, okay, let's. Okay, image, can I rotate this right there? There we go. So that's runway three. Okay, and then, what do I want? Well, runway two, one. Okay. That's runway two one right there. Okay, good. All right, so that's runway three. That's runway two one. Like so. Okay, good. And then I want, and which makes sense again. This is north, so three degrees to the right of north. So north would actually be here. This is two one zero one eight zero south. Two one zero is there. Okay, good. So let's go back to the game. I want to figure out my approach path to this runway. So this is going to be um, 295. Now, what you do is you'd either go 300 or you'd go 29. And so we're going to make this runway 29. You don't do the next digit. So All right. 29. So around my two nines right there. Okay, and then uh, 115 is the other one. So we would do, so if I'm going low on this side, low would be favoring uh, south. I want to favor uh, north on this side. So instead of uh, runway um, 11, I would probably do runway 12 on this side so let's go runway 12. okay why are you not okay oh i have to hit escape there we go that would be better okay so we'll do runway 12 on this side all right so that's runway one two so we have runway three runway 21, runway 12, and runway uh, 29. All right, so those are our runways here. And so let's go really tiny. Um, where, where are we at here? We're at 26. Let's go like, oh, I don't know, a... Let's grab a line first. So that's not bad there. Okay, and let's go text. Uh, let's go small. Let's go, I don't know, 14. Let's go uh, 030. Let's grab that. Yep. Why did it grab? That's weird. Okay, no, that's fine. That, that's fine, what it's doing. Okay. So this is giving me my heading. So this is the actual heading. So you get this well, um, because remember, this is 295. You're actually not heading 29, 290. You're heading 295. So this is going to tell me exactly what this heading is going to be. So. so this is actually 210. These are actual appropriate on the money headings um the other runway is not 
um, exact. So. So this is actually 210, so that's telling us what headings we want to go. This is going to be 295. Two nine five heading. Actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. I'm gonna make it uh, go like that. Two nine five. Yep, let's do it on the side. Two nine five, and then this one was one one five. So. Okay. And so this is giving us our actual headings that we want to. Put in our compass you know if i don't put these um if i don't do these corrections that's not going to give you the appropriate heading so this is our pr final approach headings on there so that's what actual air compass heading should be showing i don't know the runway distances i'm not going to worry about those right now so that's kind of so this is going to be my airport diagram to start with um yeah that's my airport diagram see how well i can do this so let's add a layer here Okay, I need to go down a layer if I want to make that work. Okay, uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's try that. Okay. I can't go in there because I need to go on a... Okay, delete that. Oh, come on, man. I'm not going to worry about it. I was going to delete the, all this crap out, but I don't want to be too precious to this. All right, so this is giving me some runway information. So this is my airport diagram. So let's save this as, let's do, uh, let's see, military base airport diagram. All right, let's save that for now, and then let's go ahead, uh, flatten. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in game. Let's let's spawn an altimeter. I need to get the field. Um, Height, 22 meters, so. So 72 foot uh, field height. And so let's go, oh, I don't know, 72. Seventy two. Let's also let's delete that actually and let's add a layer. I flattened all my layers, so now let's go seventy two feet MSL mean sea level. That's fine where it is. Uh, 72 feet mean sea level, so that's going to tell me um, how high the feet the field is. So, you know, I know if I'm on the runway, I'm going to be at 72 feet showing on my altimeter. So, you know, this doesn't really matter all that much here, but at like Endor, um, that's like 600 feet above the ground level, so that's important. So that's good. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Uh, next thing, let's start making the actual approach plate. 
So for the approach plate, uh, we have four runways essentially, right? So we need all four of those on there. So we're going to set this up. Um, the runway is the terminating point. So the airport. I wish I could get rid of this uh, little house here. All right, let's take a screenshot of this. Let's go back to paint. All right, so let's make an approach plate. And so let's make an approach plate for runway 2-1. All right, so what we want to do is we want to set up our uh, let's Okay. Okay, run my 2-1. Okay, that's runway 2-1 there. Go back out to unzoomed here. All right, so that's coming in runway 2-1. And I want to get zoomed all the way out here where... I've kind of actually probably should be more square approach, but we're good. Uh, what happened there? Did I undo something? There we go. I just need to hit escape. Okay, so that's runway 2-1. So I want to set this up, and so I need to... So we're going to actually make this like a GPS approach. So GPS approaches are great. They're, um, they allow you to pretty much make a point anywhere on the map so you can do more precision type approaches. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the GPS coordinates. Um, let's try to get this right. So let's go. What I should have done is marked the gps coordinates let's do this I, I know it's a little annoying what i'm doing here but um let's get this right so we have our approach here i'm going to set see where my gps is on there i want to set my cursor right there on the runway then i want to um do it again so i know a little bit annoying but um Let's go ahead and bring that in. So this one's going to actually have the appropriate um, GPS coordinates on there. All right, so now let's set up a, we want to set up essentially our course. So now I know my course, and my course here is going to be, um, we'll add a layer. So the course is going to be, let's go to 24. Uh, 210 is my course. So that's my inbound course is 210. All right. So I know my inbound course is 210. All right. So now I want to come in at, say, a 45 degree angle. So um, if you went this way, it would be uh, 210 minus 45. So you're talking, um, you know, 35 off of 200. So you're talking, you know, um, 165. So if we came in at 165, we'd come in here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll add a line. Let me just double check my calculations. I could screw this up, no problem. So 210 minus 45. 165, my brain isn't completely mush. All right, good. So that's going to be um, one of our approach. Um, so, the, you know, this is, doesn't really matter on this particular map because you um, you really don't have... I'm going to annoy everybody here probably. I need my lines too long. Okay. Um you know, because we're over the ocean, there, there are no obstacles. This would matter a lot if you had obstacles. So right there, let's go to there. And then I want to come, and this is going to be our approach there, like this. And so this is going to set up our approach. Let's actually undo that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, that's good there. 
Um, that's 45 degrees. So let's go ahead and go add a layer to 10. So 210 is our final approach course. 165. 165 is going to be our course to join. One six five is going to be our course to join. All right, and then so this is like an ADF approach, it's a little bit more difficult. So we're going to head. I can't really do that. I can put a heading in. So what we're going to do is outbound course is going to be the reciprocal of two ten, which should be zero three zero. So what we do here is zero three zero. Like that. And All right, so what essentially what we're going to do is we're going to come directly to the point. All right, so wherever we are, we're going to do this like an ADF approach. So we're going to go wherever we are. We're going to head right to the point. So that's there. We're then going to head out on a on a reverse ADF course, which is challenging because the needle moves backwards. Uh, zero three zero. Uh, now I need to figure out this distance here. So let's go ahead back here. Let's go ahead and put a, let me try to check my grid line here. I think that's it, but let me just check it. So right here, that grid line right there. So that's why I'm putting it on the grid line here is I want to set a waypoint right about there. And I want to teleport to here. That's where my station is going to be. And I need to refix this. Where am I looking here? This way. Okay. So I want 3D waypoints right there. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. 3.2 kilometers. Now I need to convert it to um, <laughs> real numbers. Uh, to nautical miles. So 3.2, 3.2 kilometers. Ah, oh, friggin' nanometers. When I type in NM, it does nanometers. 1.7. Okay. I know it's probably painfully boring for a lot of people. But um, let's go ahead and do. Go ahead and do. What, what number was that? Six. Let's go ahead and do three. And then I want to go. Let's undo that. Uh, undo. Let's go to this. Let's put a carrot in here. Okay, let's go ahead and copy this. All that to get an arrow. There we go. All right, good. And then well, it's going to be a pain to copy this or cut this out. Uh, I didn't want to cut it like that, but um, it's a reciprocal of one six five is three four five. Okay, then what we're at for this, so this should be, okay, um, three, four, five. All 
All right, so let's kind of talk our way through. Um, and then I need to do the distance. What was the distance here? Um, 1.7. So. I don't want to do it there, do I? Should be able to just, um, so right here is going to be 1.7 nautical miles. Problem with Helvetica compressed is it's compressed. One point seven nautical miles right there. Okay. All right, so that's at one point seven nautical miles. I'm gonna come in here. So what we would do is we'd, let's say we're over here. We'd come in, we'd go direct to the station. We'd get on a 030 outbound course. we go out to 1.7 nautical miles. At 1.7 nautical miles, we do a standard rate turn and we come back. Uh, we, we go out 345 and then we turn around, we come back at 165. Once we come back at 165, we join the 210 course and we take the 210 course back in and land. All right, so that is the side view. So let's save this before I screw it all up. And let's do it as desktop. Should be desktop. Why did it not go to desktop? Go to the desktop, please. Um, let's see. Military approach plate. Just in case I screw it up. All right, now let's do the side view. So we need to do the side view here. So we'll use the grid lines here. So. So let's do a rectangle. That's going to be the airport. And do, where is color picker? I forget how to do color picker. Color picker, there it is. Color picker, I want that color. And I'm going to flood this if I can do it without destroying absolutely everything. Okay, I can't do it like that, so that's fine. So I have color picker there. Let's just make a new rectangle. And so that just looks like the island, so that's why I did it that way. Let's do color picker. I want this green, and let's then flood this bad sucker there. Okay, so that's our island. Oh, get out of there, you devil. Okay. That's good. So now this view over here is going to actually be the So this view here is going to actually be the side view. Okay. So right there. All right. So this is going to be that vertical element that tells me where I have to go. So what I want to start here is at, um, so field altitude is 72 feet. So I want to be at, I want to be at 1072, so 1072 feet. So I want to cross the field there. Yeah, 1072. Then I want to come out. Actually, I don't need a line there. I don't want a line there. So um, let me see. That's two miles. So I'm going to be doing about three miles per minute. So let's say I'm doing two miles per minute. So let's take, say that took me a minute to get in. That's reasonable. Okay. So let's say we want to start um, at 1072. So let's put that back in. So 1072. All right, and then I want to descend down. So I'm going to make this a very simple uh, descent profile down to about here. And then at um, 0.5 nautical miles, I want to be at 200 feet. So let's go 0.5 nautical miles. 
I want to be at 200 feet. Now I should have put the foot symbol there, so. But um, it's not the end of the world. Let's see if I can add it. Probably not. Nope. I didn't make a new layer, so I'm not going to worry about it. See if I can add it here without being a pain. Right there. Okay. So essentially what's going to happen is we'll come in from wherever. We'll head directly to the point. We get to the point, we're going to track a course of 030 out for 1.7 nautical miles. Once we hit 1.7 nautical miles, we're going to go up uh, 3, 4, 5 heading. Um, we're going to go out. We need a distance for that. So we'll do 0.5 nautical miles. So uh, for 0.5 nautical. I accidentally hit a key on my keyboard. That's why I growled. Uh, 0.5 nautical miles. And that needs to be rotated. Okay. Um, let's go undo on that. And then I need to add a layer because I don't think I added a layer. 0.5 nautical miles. Let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, X, V, there we go. We'll go out for 0.5 nautical miles. Okay. Now, 0.5 nautical miles, we're then going... Uh, so, we're gonna, we have to calculate this via time. We still want it as a distance, but the only way we can tell this distance is by timing ourselves. So, if we're going, say, 120 knots, that's 2 miles per minute. Um, so we need a quarter of a minute, so we need 15 seconds. So we'd turn out for 15 seconds, we'd come back around. Um, so that's not going to be enough. So, um, one nautical mile. So that's going to be 30 seconds. Um, so that's, that, that, even that's pushing it, uh, if I can get this done. Okay, so we'll go out for uh, one nautical mile. All right, then we'll come back in, and we'll come in on 165. So we're going to come out here. We'll go turn. We'll come back in on 165. And we'll rejoin the 210 course. Um, once we're within... Uh, 1.7 nautical miles. When we're within 1.7 nautical miles, if you remember, I said this is how you make sure you don't hit obstacles is you keep it within a certain distance. Uh, once we're within 1.7 nautical miles, we can descend from 1,072 feet down to 200 feet. Actually, we want this 275 feet. 272 feet, rather. Let's see. Okay, why can't I grab? Oh, it's un it's under the layer. Um, all right, don't, I'm not going to worry about that. That should be 272, um, because I want to be 200 feet above the field. I don't want to be 200 feet above the water. All right, so let's save this as the approach plate. All right, good. So this is done. Let's go ahead and let's try to run this. Now, running it in the cormorant is going to be more difficult, but because I'm moving faster. Um, so I need to put the waypoint right there. Okay. So let's try it in the cormorant. Um, actually, let's do it in the Katie did. I can get the Katie did very slow. And because I can get the Katie did slow, that's going to be the best bet for me for actually doing this in the first shot, not screwing it up. All right. So let's do it in Katie. Um, Katie should be all set up for this, and uh, I can stop if I need to. That's one of the things that's beneficial of using a helicopter to do this. All right, so we'll do this in Katie. I'm just, I'm just going to leave everything open. I don't really want to take time to close everything. All right, so let's go ahead and shut the cockpit door. Let's go ahead and I want to... Let's start by putting in the, that... 
Uh, let's do autopilot on for now, for just for the gyro sake. Let's enter this in. Okay. And so let's go ahead and start getting out of here. And so we're going to do an approach here. So we're going to start from anywhere. So what I will do is I'm going to start from down over there. So let's get our hit, our altitude right. So we want our altitude at 1072, 1072, 1072. Let's go ahead and put altitude hold on. Uh, what's our current heading? 235. That's fine. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in about oh 90 degrees, something like that. So let's keep about oh I don't know. Let's go 60 knots. Again, one of the reasons I'm taking Katie is I can go very slow. 60 knots would be doable in the core ramp, but it would be a pain where this is much easier. So let's go 60 knots. That's one mile a minute. That's going to be easy for me to do the math. Uh, 235. Let's do 235. 235. All right, so that's fine. So we're, we're going. Let's get our distance going. I want to keep being able to see that distance. I can see it on here, too, but um, bearing distance is a mile. All right, so we're a mile out. Let's we're actually we're still flashing. This will only read down to a mile. So once that light goes out, um, we'll turn back. So we're going to do this not in the clouds. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go for our heading bearing. I'm going to do this all with my um, actual heading. So um, let's go ahead and bearing is three six. So let's go to uh, three five on the heading. So I'm going to actually help it. I'm going to turn. Heading hold. Okay, heading hold is in. Okay, so we're on. Uh, I need to go 1-7. So let's go 10. I need to stay ahead of this. So we're going to go to the end of the runway. So what we're doing here is we are coming in from over here. We're going to go right to this point. And then we're going to go out. All right, so I'm trying. Can I keep this up here and not have it be a pain for everybody? We're still climbing. I don't know why we're still climbing, but we are. Okay, so see, we're headed towards the end of the runway here. Okay. All right, once we hit that point, so we're going to flip. I want to go out on the 030, which will be a 210. So I want to go um, heading of 210. We're Passing the point, 210 heading. And I'm actually going out on the bearing on the radial. What the hell's going on here? Am I doing this right? I think I am. I'm just trying to. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, where's that? Nope, I'm going the wrong way. 030 is what I want. That's why another reason I'm taking Katie. So we want to go out on 030. So again, if I actually look at my approach plate here, you can see um, 030 is what we want to go out on. Katie's just having a fit because I'll tell you why Katie's having a fit. 60 knots is right where it switches from um, helicopter mode to airplane mode. That's why it's having a fit. So, all right, we're going out on 030, but we want to keep this at, um, at 030. So let's turn 10 degrees to the right. So let's go 40. I want to keep this at um, so this should read this should be at 210. All right, so I know I'm probably confusing everybody, but I'll tell you why it's 210. If we look at the approach plate, right? We're going outbound. We want to be on a 030 heading, but we want the uh, ADF works backwards, so we need a 210 to show the needle is going to point here. So the needle we want the needle to be showing 210 the whole time. So see how it's climbing? That's good. Let's go back on 030. And so th we want to keep this on 210. Perfect. All right, so distance. I want distance to be, let's let it get out to two miles. So we are currently on, we're currently following this actual course line of 210. See how it just went to 209? All right, so what I need to do is I need to increase my heading maybe to um, 32. I want to keep that at 210. So I need to, if that drops again, I need to go the other way. 
So I'm trying to keep this on 210. We're only one degree off. It's not bad. I'm going to wait for this distance to reach two miles. I should have made it two miles. 210. See, perfect. So now let's go down to 31. So we need to probably just a little wind correction in there. All right, so I'm following my, my uh, course out. Now remember, I cannot descend until I get within uh, two miles of the field. So, you know, I don't have decimal places on this. I probably should put decimal places on the distance. All right, so I will wait to that. And then, so next thing, next step we want to do on our approach here is I want to turn out. Uh, we're at two miles, so I should be turning to 345. That's just a heading. So let's go 345, 345. All right, so we're going to go out for, um, we'll go out for, what did I put, one mile. So that's going to be a little less than a minute. So we're just going to kind of time that out. And so let me get into, you can, you can see the airport. So now we're out in that leg going up here, and we're getting ready to go on that. So if you look, the visual representation is correct. All right, so let's go ahead and turn back in. So we want to turn back in so we can read, look at our, our picture here. We want to be on a 165 heading. So let's go 165. Should be a left turn. Uh, left or right turn, it doesn't matter. Just needs to be 165. It's going to turn us right. will actually give us more space and more time to play with this. Our altitude is insane. Katie is not behaving with altitude again. I don't know why... Katie's altitude is screwed up like this. I need to fix Katie Did's altitude again. It's screwed up, so I don't know why it's... We should be at um, just over 1,000 feet. We're at 3,000 feet, so... I don't know why it's misbehaving so badly, but I need to fix it, so... I thought I fixed it, but apparently I did not, so... We're just at a huge, a super high altitude. This is fine. You could come in at a higher altitude. You just want to make sure you you cross that two mile mark at 1072. Um, that's because they'll they'll route traffic above you. All right. So now we're watching this number, right? We're looking for an inbound course. We want of uh, zero of uh, 210. So let's we should be turning on course now. Let's go 210. I pr I missed it. Um, I actually missed our course because I wasn't paying attention. We got to go to the right more. So let's go 250. So I need to get this course to show 210. I got distracted by my altitude. All right. So now once I get within two miles, so watch this. This should start dropping. See how it's dropping? Once that hits 210, I want to follow that 210 course. And we need to descend. Remember, descending down to 200 feet within two miles. So let's put that in there at um, 200 feet, 200. Probably not going to behave, um, but I'll fix it. So see, it's coming in. So I want to take some of this heading out. Let's go 220. So we can visually see this, but in the clouds, we'd be able to be doing this. We're watching this here. We're waiting for 210. At 210, I'm going to turn my heading to 210. I need to descend here. All right, so we're almost there. Let's turn our heading to 210. All right, we're on our final approach course. We're just a degree off, which isn't too bad. We're descending down to 200 feet. Pretend we're in the fog. We can't see the airport. We can't see the airport. Coming down to 200 feet. Can't see the airport. Still can't see the airport. We're close on course. We're only one degree off. We're two degrees off, so we need to go uh, 209. That will fix that course for us. Okay, we're at 200 feet. We can't see the airport. We can't see the airport. We're actually going the wrong way. Uh, we want 215. See the numbers still increasing? Okay, and boom, we can see the airport. Autopilot comes off. We're coming in to land. We're going to get on our on our approach here. We start to pull our throttle back. And we land. Okay, so the approach works. Um, so some things is it's a little bit tight. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't do that, you. All right, so the approach works. So Katie was definitely the way to do this um, because I can slow, go slower. Um, it's going to be much tougher in the Cormorant. So that what that tells me is I need to increase my distances. My distances are way too short. I just don't have the time to get this, um, you know, with those short distances. So let's fix that up, and I think we'll end the video there. 
So this is fun having some approach, um, some approaches. You know, maybe I'm the only one that thinks it's fun. But um, so let's fix some numbers here. Okay. So um, 1.7 nautical miles is not enough. Can I delete these without this being? Probably not. I flattened everything. Okay, yeah, I can't. So let's start really fresh quickly. It's not going to be a pain. It won't be too much of a pain. Let's do this. Okay, so let's, uh, I should be able to knock this out pretty quick. So add a layer. Okay, we want to go out there to there. We want to make this, um, add another layer. Uh, that's zero three zero. Zero three zero. Then we want to go forty five off of this. Can I keep? Go 45 degrees off of this. Okay. Uh, 45 degrees off of this. There we go. That will be... What was it? Go to my reciprocals. Uh, 165. You know, uh, 345 rather. 345 heading... So this will be a three, four, five heading. So ADF approach is a little bit different, um, a little bit more difficult. It's gonna be a one, six, five coming back in. One, six, five coming back in. And then we want our two, 10 heading coming back in. Three the zero three zero should be facing the other way, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fix it now. It's annoying that I have to hit escape nine times to get what I want, but yeah, that zero three zero should be upside down. It should be facing the other direction. As well as the three four five, I think. But um all right, so here I want this, I need more distance. So that is gonna be uh, four nautical miles. So that'll give us four miles. Um, yeah, so that'll be better. Uh, we'll go up four nautical miles. That will give us four nautical miles to get on course. Um, can I run this really quick? Let me run this really quick. Um, and then let's go ahead and go to this one here. This is fine. So let's go ahead and let's go. Okay, so that's good. Um, that's in there. So this is kind of our new course. Let's go ahead and run this really quick. Uh, So this is my approach plate. I'm going to keep it off to the side here. And let's go ahead and let's take out the cormorant. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. The cormorant, uh, I still have to fix it. Um, Katie's altitude hold. But the cormorant's going to allow me to kind of do this more realistically. I have to go faster, which is can be a little bit of a pain. I'm not going to keep showing you all the stuff because it's, uh, I need to pay attention too much. You know, imagine this with weather. Um, you know, this is me doing it without weather. You can imagine how much more difficult this is with weather. All right, so we're going to take off here, flaps. I'm just going to do, I'm not going to bother with my checklist. I know that's not wise, but go ahead and set the waypoints in there. I want an alt uh, altitude of um, 1072. All right, so that's going to be my pattern altitude. This should hold altitude better. I still need to fix Katie's altitude hold. I don't know why it's screwed up. I'll have to fix it. 
turn the volume uh, sound up a little bit. I have that headset on the seat, so I can't really hear the engine very well. We're going to try to go slow, as slow as we can. Um, again, the slower we go, the more time we have to kind of screw things up and fix them. Uh, so I'm going to set my heading to a 210 here. So you always want to set your heading to the uh, runway heading. Okay, so let's get out of here. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll put AP Master on, gyro on, uh, positive rate, gears coming up, flaps are coming up over 100. I'm going to try to get slowed down here to a reasonable speed. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a... Uh, let's go ahead and turn, oh, I don't know, let's do 270, we'll head to the west. And so we're going to come around to the west, and we're going to kind of join it on that weird pathing. Not weird pathing, we're going to join it kind of on the... You know. Alright, let's see where the runway is. Okay, let's go ahead and let's head right to it, so uh, 041. And that's going to keep climbing, so let's go to 50. I want to head right to the point. So again, imagine we're in the fog. Let me just add a hair of fog, just so you guys can kind of see what it would look like. Not going to add a ton of fog, but, um, you know, this is what the instrument approach is all about, is navigating without the use of your points. And so kind of what I'll do is I'm going to take this off. And so now we can't see it. So let's go ahead. Let's go directly to that. And I will fix this once it gets on course. All right, we're still going a little fast. Let's go down and try to get a little slower. If I can get 80 knots, I'll be happy. Uh, let's go 6-9 on this, 6-9. And then I want to take this back off and put it on heading hold. So we should be going directly to the point. Getting slow, so it's getting wobbly. Speed back up. We're going to probably have to keep 100 knots. Cormorant likes 100 knots for stability, you see. All right, so you see the airport's coming in. We're coming right to the point. So 70, I have to keep updating this. All right, so now we want to go on our outbound course, which is 030. So we're going to go ahead and go 30. And we're going to turn. We're going to outbound. Now we need to watch um, our course, right? Our course should show 210. The problem is with an ADF, it... it it goes backwards. So um, we need to turn in the direction to maintain a 210 heading. So if the number keeps crawling, going up, we go one way. So 209, that's good. We're pretty close. We're within a degree. So we're going to go out four nautical miles. So we should have a distance of, we want four nautical miles. So we're, we're within a degree of where we want to be at. That's not bad. Let's get it right on the money. Let's go 31. It will either climb or descend. Oh, nope, 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 not 21, you dickhead. Sorry. <laughs> there have been some uh, bad disparaging words of myself the last couple of videos. Go 32. I want that 210 heading. Again, one of the things is, um, you know, with instrument approaches is you don't want to... There we go, 210. So let's go to 31. We have a little bit of a wind. All right, so we want to keep a 210. So let me pause it really quick, and I'll show you again what we're doing. So we came in from over here, right? We came out. We went 270. We came back around. We went directly to the ADF. So imagine that's a little shack with, a, with an antenna in it. We went right back there. As soon as we got close, I turned out 030, but we were running a little bit to the north of this line. So that's when I put in that correction and we got back on our course. We want to stay on course. So now we're going out on course. We're going to go 210 all the way out. So that needle should be showing 210 all the way out for four miles. At four miles, we're going to turn to 345. We're going to go out there for a minute. We're going to turn back around 365. And then we're going to join the 030 course. So we're going to keep going until that Needle almost says 030. We're going to come in. We're going to track the 030 course in. Once we're within, this should be. Um, we'll do. That's fine. 1.7 nautical miles. We'll go down to point. Uh, we'll go down to 200 feet. Okay, good. 
All right, so we're waiting for this to say four nautical miles. I'm, you know, I'm trying to fight the urge to go too fast. Let's actually slow down a hair. Let's go. Um, one twenty will give us two miles a minute. So see, we're perfectly on two ten. So I needed that extra degree to account for the wind. All right, so we're waiting for. Um, right now we're waiting for four miles. But once it gets close, I'm going to put in uh, three, four, five. All right, so it's getting, we're about less than a half mile out. So this is giving us more space and time. And here we go, three, four, five, three, four, five. All right, now we could be at a higher altitude. Once we're within four miles, that's when we want to descend down to 1072. So if we're at 3,000 feet, when we get within four miles, we want to descend down to 1072. That's what the approach plate's telling us. So we're going to go out for about a minute. Just going to kind of wing it a little bit. Uh, the more, you know, the more I go out, uh, the further I go out, the, the, um, the more time it's given me to get on course. I don't have to rush too much. All right, so that's good enough. Let's go 165. That's the reciprocal of 345. So we're going to make our right turn. And what we're looking for is we want to get on a course of uh, zero of, I'm sorry, we want to get on a course of, um, no, it'll be 210. It's 210 because it's an ADF approach. You're not going outbound, outbound radials here. So let's look, uh, let's add this really quick. So as you can see where we're at, we're up here. We actually need to turn on course now. Let's go, um, I missed it a little bit, 220. I rushed it, so I need to go past. Check our distance. Okay, see we're outside of four nautical miles. We don't want to descend below 1,072 until we're within four. So see there, we're getting close to our 210. We don't need the reciprocal really because um, we don't need the reciprocal because this is an ADF approach. So we're doing the same needle point. The needle always points at the station ADF. If we had a VOR, we'd need that 030. Zero, zero. Okay, so we're going the wrong. That's descending. So let's go 208. So see how that went to 207? We need to go the other way to get that needle to come up for us. So we actually, I was all right. I just turned inside of it a little bit. So I need to get this number to, to climb to 210. Uh, four nautical miles, we want to descend down to 200 feet. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Let's do 200 on here. Need to get this, I need to get this to climb back up to 210. There we go. See, it's climbing now. Okay. When it climbs up around 210, I'm going to actually go 209 because remember the wind is from this side. So I remember that from my way out. I'm putting the same wind correction angle I had in the last time. Okay, it's climbing still. We're getting back on course. So this is my wind correction angle. I have about a, or this is my course correction is about um, nine degrees. All right, one more. We're going to go to 209. So 209, once that hits 210, I'm going to click it. So I'm watching behind it there. 210, clicked it. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, man. Hold your altitude. You. I was too slow. The friggin' autopilot wasn't holding my altitude. Jesus. Being annoying. I was too slow, and it wasn't holding my altitude. Hold the altitude, please. So the wobbling is because of the flaps, and... I'm going slow. This likes to be a little bit faster. All right, so see we're on a 210 course. We're doing all right. We're at 209 feet. Wasn't the you know the autopilot wasn't holding the altitude, so this is kind of annoying. I'm gonna take some flap out here. So this thing likes to be about a little bit over 200 knots. Uh, landing gear is coming down. Parking brake is off. All right, so now we see the runway. All right, we're going to take the autopilot off. We're going to continue. So we're going to manually fly it now. We've decided we're going to land. All right, so this is how an instrument, this is how an ADF instrument approach works. ADF is like the oldest form of 
instrument approaches. So they are a uh, little bit, it's a little bit, le it's definitely the least precise of approach, but it's working well, as you can see. So that's a good approach. The only issue I had was the friggin' autopilot decided that, well, as part of it, was, I was too slow. So we won't blame the autopilot as I got too slow, but so that, that got us back to this airport. So now we can start to, I will start to come up with procedures for my all my different airports I go to, and I won't have to shut off the fog to get in. So with this very simple, this is an old timey thing, uh, ADF. So let's bring up, I'll bring up a quick thing, and then I gotta go. But um, let me stop us here really quick. And am I doing brakes? My brakes should be actuating. Oh, space bar, space bar. My brakes. I can't remember what I set my brakes to. That's why, you know, last time I ended up having an issue, that was because I um, I didn't, uh, I couldn't remember what my brakes were. All right, so let me bring up ADF really quick here. I'll do ADF navigation. All right, uh, automatic direction finder uh, Wikipedia, so. This is the old, this is an old system. Um, this is what your needle looks like. Um, and so let me try to, let me try to explain it to you really quick. So again, you know, as a flight instructor, I used to have to explain this st stuff to people. It's just, that's what the I and CFI is, is instrument. So um, let's not do that. Let's go ahead and oh, get out of there. So essentially, um, what an ADF does is it, the needle always points to the station. So um, let me add a layer. We make a needle. Go like that. And then so you have the needle. It, it looks like an arrow. And this is one of the oldest things. I meant to look up. Um, I meant to look up what year it was. Um, trying to see. There are a lot of... So ADF is definitely the, the oldest and it's the least accurate. Of course, you know, you had celestial navigation using the stars before that. So it's not the oldest, but you know what I mean. All right. So uh, let's say this house is where the ADF needle is. It's an antenna. So what they actually used to do is they used um, AM radio stations. So let's say... You know, you had Sawyer, the Sawyer Islands, and you had the Arid Islands, and you have, you know, Channel 660, which is the um, Sawyer North Islands um, AM radio station. Then you had the Arid Biome. You could navigate directly to the antenna. And then you also had airports that would spit out their own, but instead of playing the radio, they'd play Morse codes. So if you ever listen to an AM radio station or any radio station, really, and they read out their identifier, they go, this is Channel 660, Sawyer Islands. You know, the reason they're telling that is that's how airplanes used to navigate. So you would turn on the AM radio station, you'd listen and go, this is 660 Sawyer Islands. And so, you know, okay, well, I want to go to Sawyer Islands. So I'd put 660 in and my needle would point here. So let's say at airports, though, they play Morse code. So if we want to go to the military base using this, we would listen to the Morse code. We'd turn on and instead of an AM radio station, we'd go beep, 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 beep. And you would then look on the chart, and you would have quick, 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 long, quick, 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 long. Okay, that is this. That's the identifier. And then so the needle always points to here. So let's say that our airplane is moving this way. Well, the needle is going to point to our right. We turn our airport plane to the right. The needle points right at it. Now, if we move up here, right, the airplane's moving f up. The needle is still pointing there. So what was happening with this approach was as we were coming in, right, we came, so we came down this way, right? So as we were coming down, the needle was still pointing like this. As we started turning off to the west, remember we turned to 270 heading, the needle was pointing like this. As we turned around, right, the needle was pointing at the station the whole time that we were turning, whole time that we were turning, then we came in. And the needle was pointing straight at it. So as the airplane was moving, the needle was pointing. It was actually pointing at the end of the runway. That's where it was. So it's pointing, it's pointing, it's pointing. Now, as we get close, right, the needle is going to start going crazy. 
Well, that's when I started moving outbound on my course. So I start moving outbound on my course, at, but the needle still points at the station. So this is where ADF gets a little bit hairy, right? The needle is always going to point at 210. Is going to point. So we wanted to go out on 210, and so the problem is this needle moves backwards. So we had wind blowing from this direction, right? So the wind was trying to blow us left off course, right? So the needle is going to actually go like this. And so what we need to do is we need to go right, and then that will make the needle go back. And so we need to put in a course correction so the needle reads like that. And then when we put in our course correction, the needle looked like that. So as we were heading out on our course, the needle was pointed like this the whole time. Then we went up on a 345 heading. Well, as we went up on that 345 with our plane, the needle was still pointed there. We ignore the needle. We come back around on a 165, needle still pointing towards the station. And then what we wanted to do is we wanted to get on a 210. So we came back. I actually overshot the course a little bit. So the needle was pointed like this. And then I came back, and the needle started fixing. And then if you remember, I got too far to... Um, I let the wind blow me, blew me to the west of the course. So I was actually... The needle was like this. So what I did was I put in a little course correction and came back. And then once I got my wind figured out, I was able to come in at 210 the whole time. So the needle is always pointing at the course. And then actually when we passed the runway, you didn't see it because I was busy landing, but the needle will go, it'll flip like this. And then the needle will go like this as we go around. So that's what it's doing. So I thought that was pretty neat. I hope you guys enjoyed that. But what this is going to allow me to do is um, build some instrument approaches, and we can go out there in foggy, miserable conditions and I can start landing at airports. Now, like I was saying, sky built a VR. I am not good enough at Lua to be doing that. So at some point, I might integrate that into one of my builds. But that's a much uh, that's a much more advanced system. And so I kind of I built this I built this um, what do you call it? This approach played a little bit wrong. I built it um, as a VOR. It should be more of an ADF. So like that 030 course. It's not bad to have it to know your outbound course because that's going to tell you your heading, so I'm going to leave it. But the needle is always going to be pointing at the station. The VOR is different. Um, what you would do is you would you would spin the needle, you would spin the course of the VOR so that it's it's straight, and then you would head towards the station, and then you would turn it to a 030. You do 030 outbound, or you could do a 210 from. We're not getting into that nonsense. And then you would. Um, It'd actually probably be better spin it to um, 210, do a 210 from, and then head out on the 210 from course. And then as you come around, spin it to 210 to, and then you'd come in. So I know I'm probably confusing everybody, but um, this is the most complex type of, in my opinion, complex type of instrument approach. It took me the longest to learn as a student. And the way I learned it was actually kind of the way I taught it was I went on flight sim. And one of the great things about Flight Sim was it would show your path on the map. And so what I would do is I had the approach plate next to me. I would fly it um, on Flight Sim. I would look at my map, and I would try to make my map look like the approach plate. And then I would see what is the needle doing. And then I said, okay, this makes sense to me. Once I had a visual representation of it, so I was like struggling, dude, in the airplane. And the airplane's much more stressful because you have to manage the airplane the whole time, make sure you don't crash. And so it's much more stressful that way. And so once I kind of get that visual representation, but I thought you guys might think that was cool. And I will make some more of these kind of off screen probably. And we can use these in the career build series. So I'll see you later. Bye.